Do you remember what your hands can do? Grab a needle and thread and let's sew together. Did you know that you could hem with a running stitch? In this video, we are going to practice doing an even and consistent running stitch on a hem. Historically speaking, from on 18th century garments, I have seen this done numerous times and it's, it's fast and it's also strong. To begin, we're going to fold up our fabric, the width that we want our hem to be, and then we're gonna take our needle and we're gonna dip it down into the fabric and then rock it back up again. And we're gonna do larger stitches that are roughly uh, about a quarter of an inch apart or maybe about half of a centimeter apart. The whole point is just to hold this fold up temporarily until we go back and actually do our hemming. As you're working, if you are right-handed, you're gonna be working right to left. And if you're left-handed, you're gonna be working left to right. So as you can see here, I'm progressing along the work and my non-dominant hand is holding the fabric and is actually pressing against the table right now to stabilize this. I'm keeping my hands relaxed. I'm keeping the needle parallel to the work. And as I fold it up this fabric, I wanna make sure that this fold is in line with the grain line here. So you can actually kind of see in the fabric that yarn right there. And that yarn connects back into the fold right here. Because if you press this fold up a little askew, then you're going to end up with an askew hem. Uh, and at the end, your fabric is either going to hang over or it's not going to meet up with the end. So it's very important that you are folding the work in the right direction, going in the right direction of the grain line. And once you're done basting, just do a little back stitch, meaning go back to the stitch you just did, and then progress on the other side of the tail, and then snip that off to lock it in place. Now that we have our hem basted up into place so that this raw edge is now turned up, now to actually do that hem, I'm going to fold this fabric up along the same width of that base. You can see how easily this then folds up because what that does is create kind of like a gauge in order for that to be a nice even hem. And like I was saying before, as we fold this up, we want to make sure that our grain line of our fold is then going in the same direction as the grain line of the actual fabric. So to then actually stitch this fold into place, we're gonna be using a running stitch. I am going to be stitching right along the fold right here. So about one or two yarns below this fold is where that needle is going to be going in. If you're right-handed, you're gonna start on the right side. If you're left-handed, you're starting on the left side. I'm gonna dip it down and just push it, doing a kind of a smaller stitch. And then I'm gonna progress a couple of threads to the other side of where this tail is. If you are left-handed, it's going to be on the right hand of that tail. If you are right-handed, it's gonna be on the left side of that tail. I'm gonna dip that down and come back up again. And push that through. In essence, it's the exact same technique we use for basting, but this time we're gonna be doing a very small version of a running stitch. And you can take a couple of stitches at a time if, if you want. And so then what's happening on the other side is a tiny little top stitch, just like you see on the other side if you're doing a hem stitch or like the felling stitch that we've, that we've practiced before. So then continue on with that same technique. I've seen a couple of variations. Sometimes I've seen it where you actually carry the thread a little bit wider and then do a really tiny stitch and then you carry it wider and then do a really tiny stitch. So you actually have more thread on the underside a little less thread on the outside. But regardless, you want these stitches to be roughly about eight to 10 stitches to the inch, or about eight to 10 stitches to every two and a half centimeters. I'm using the table to stabilize my hands, and then my hands are stabilizing the work. I'm stitching right along the fold. So about a thread, maybe two down from the, the fold. But I'm barely moving my needle. I'm just gently dipping this down and using my non-dominant hand to actually move the fabric along with the needle. And when you come to the end of the work, what I like to do is take a tiny little back stitch, the same size as the running stitch I just did, 
pull my needle through, but then make a loop and then take your needle and pass it through the loop twice. Pull that knot. And then what I would recommend doing is actually taking your needle, dipping down into the stitch and then going in between the fold and the outer fabric. And this is what it looks like on the underside. You don't actually see the needle coming through the fabric at all. It's only through that kind of in between the layers. So I'm gonna pull that through. And what that's gonna actually do here is that means that this is gonna be hidden and it doesn't even look like a knot. It looks like a stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut off this tail. So there you have it, a beautiful small hem. And this is what it looks like on the back side. Try this out on your next project and let me know what you think. I hope that this helped you remember what your hands can do. Happy sewing, everyone.